Don Barnes here on behalf of Studio One Expert. And today, we're going to look at enhancing your productivity using an open secret in Studio One. Now, most people know that there's something called the info view, but they haven't taken advantage of it. Now, the question is, how are you going to learn all the shortcuts and keyboard modifiers that will make you more productive for what you're doing? Well, I'm going to tell you right now, you can go to the manual and you can read. You can look at the keyboard shortcuts in the help system. That works pretty darn well. You can go to the Studio One Expert site where there's just insane amounts of good information that will help you be better with Studio One. But what I'm talking about today is the learn while you earn plan. And it's a little question mark here. Now, many people have turned this on and you get this little strip and it's like, what's that about? Well, what I recommend to begin with is somebody breaks it out of its little space here and it's in its own window. Now you can expand this window or contract it. You can make it sized to anything you want. And we'll just start like this and watch what happens as the mouse hovers over different elements in the interface. I'm going to get different information in this view. For example, I'm over an event. Now it tells me all the keyboard modifiers that I can use against this event. Now most of you already know this, that if you use Control Alt, you can slip your audio within this event. Many people know that, but not everybody knows that. And for example, I didn't know this until I used this view that I could shift double click and it will select all events that are on a track. So that's really slick to select all the events. Now you probably know control shift A will do the same thing. There's a menu here that we can choose edit, select, select all on tracks. You can do it that way. So there's a keyboard shortcut for it. There's a menu choice for it, but there's also a double click event with a shift key and you can learn that in the info view. And once somebody notices that when they move up over the timeline, there's some other things they can do. For example, I didn't know originally that if I double clicked in the timeline, now it starts playing back my audio. And this is undocumented, by the way, this is just a bonus. If you double click below, if you have click and empty space enabled in the tools, in the options, you can double click down there. That also works. It's the same as doing it in the timeline. So that's just a little bonus there. But notice that while I'm hovering over this, I get options specific to just what I'm working on. So if you're in the marker track, for example, most people know you can grab a marker and you can drag it around. But not everybody knows that if I use the Alt key or the Control key, if I use Control or Command, if you're on the Mac. But, and that's the other thing, it's, key, it's uh, operating system specific. So whatever you're using, it will use. And then if I use the other key here, the Alt key or the Option key, then I'll set the endpoint. So I, I can drag them around, that's fine, that's easy. But there are also keyboard modifiers which make it simple. And of course, the same thing up here in the timeline. Most people know that you can, you can drag this up and down and that changes your zoom level. That's pretty easy. What most people don't realize is you can also move this timeline back and forth and, that, that, and then you can do both at once if you're really good with the mouse. You can actually do both at once. So I learned all these shortcuts in context because I just displayed this. So just set this up here. I leave it in a little strip when I'm working with it, but the first time for others, I recommend they start this way. And once you see how it works and you're hovering over elements and they're telling you what they do, then later you can go ahead and throw it up here and just have this little strip and you can glance up at it while you're working. Now, for example, I knew that you could drag this, and of course, I knew this was a drag handle, which will get you a fade. And down here is another drag handle that you can drag up and down, and you can change the fade. What I didn't know from the info view, I'm going to just put it right next to my event here. Watch this. When you hover over this control, I did not know that you could have the shift key, and now you can adjust both the end point See, the, the beginning point stays anchored. And you can adjust the type of fade all at once. So as I move the mouse around, you can see the end point is moving as I go back and forth. Up and down is going to change the style of fade I have. And that if you use fades. So here's the beauty of it. If you don't use fades, who cares? You're never going to grab this drag handle. You're not going to see the information that's associated with it here. If you're doing a lot of fades, then you'll notice that if that's displayed, your info window, you go, hmm, what in the world does that do? Shift, and they highlight it there. And, and then you can, you can experiment with it, you can play with it and figure out, aha, is that valuable for me or is it not? 
And then I like this one, of course, this one I use all the time. If you sing, if you use control or command and you single click, it resets that to, to its beginning value. Same with this one here, that if you happen to have something where you've modified a few things, then if you shift control or shift command and click any place, it resets them all. And that's one of those things that I just wouldn't have known without the info view. You're gonna keep finding uses for this. Now, a couple caveats. If you're in version three, they did not include some of the new features in version three. For example, Scratchpad isn't even shown here. And the same with this video. Some things have some information, some things don't. My gut says that when they put out the release, they're worried about the features and how it works. This is a bonus, it's a learning tool, it's a help system. And they just didn't fill in every single blank for version three. I suspect they'll go back in a maintenance release and they will adjust things that they missed and it'll just show up one day as all filled in. So a great tool, put it up here, have it while you're working, glance up at it, and you'll find out that there are some things that you probably don't know and some shortcuts in context that you can use. And I just love the little things I found. This is gold for me, being able to double click both above and below and start playing my audio from any point that I want without having to go and choose something or even press the space bar. That's what's so handy and I found that via the info view plus the other trick of shift double click to select all events on my track. And I know quite a few other hundreds of keystroke combinations and modifiers, but I learned them using this tool. I didn't have to go look it up every time, so it's a big bonus for you, it's a big win. So I hope you enjoy this. This is one of those little power tools that will help you take your work to another level without having to go and run to the manual, without having to read things that don't apply. So a great tool, I think you'll love it. Uh, give us some feedback, put some notes, check out the rest of the Studio One Expert site, amazing information, I think you'll love it, I do and we'll see you on the wires.